With social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube now promoting more shorts, reels, and video work, I've started revisiting the classic cinemagraph to help fool the algorithms into promoting my still photography work. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can create a simple cinemagraph or a crazy complex one like this one here. <laughs> So what is a cinemagraph? Well, a cinemagraph is basically a still image that has a piece of motion wrapped into the photo itself. Often these are shot with video and then using masking techniques, you can get just one portion of the image to have movement. But if you're a professional photographer and you've taken an image with strobe light or maybe you've composited a crazy complex image in post-production, chances are you don't have any video to help make this image come to life. That's where the photo editing software Optics comes in handy. Now I've done some videos on Optics in the past and you can check out those videos. Basically, it's a raw editor that allows you to do all sorts of composite and creative edits organically with their powerful particle illusion generator. With the recent update to Optics, you can not only use the particle generator to create special effects in your still images, but you can now create video loops that will make cinemagraphs incredibly easy to create. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you wanna download Optics and start creating cinemagraphs yourself, go to the link in the description below or the pinned comment below to get your own copy. Of course, there is a special discount for all of our F-Stoppers readers, so make sure you take advantage of that. Now for this video, I wanted to create an incredibly complex cinemagraph and walk you through the entire process start to finish. So let's jump right into it. First, let's talk about the photo shoot. Now for this photo session, I wanted to take an image of a girl floating or swimming and cut her out and put her on a back plate so that it appears that she's underwater. Now, as you can see from the behind the scenes video here, I wanted to make it incredibly easy to cut crystal out from our backdrop. So I used white seamless paper, but then on the ground, I also used some white foam core. I also suspended some on a light stand. This would all just make cutting her out in post a whole lot easier. Now, the trick to the lighting in this photo shoot was I wanted to use some large soft boxes on the left and right side of our model so that I could freeze any motion but then at the same time, I wanted to introduce some teal and purple lights into our shadows. In order to do that, I used these little tiny LED panels. I turned them up as bright as they could go. And then by shooting at F2.8, ISO 640, and a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, I was able to find that perfect balance point where I could freeze motion, but I could also let my lights bleed into the frame as well. Together, we worked on different poses and jumping sequences to try to come up with the perfect frame that would give the illusion that she's underwater and suspended without actually having to be underwater. The jumping and the fans helped fluff up her hair to really sell this effect. We took a ton of images, but I think this image is my favorite from the entire session. In Photoshop, I cut Crystal out using the pen tool, and then I wanted to create a really interesting backplate. Of course, artificial intelligence is all the rave right now. So I went to Mid Journey, and using a couple different keywords, I was able to create this underwater forest with coral, all in this teal and purple color scheme. And using this as a backplate, and then also the studio work, I think these complement each other and give me a really cool underwater looking scene. Now that I have a really great looking composite image created, now it's time to add the motion effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the computer now. Let's open up optics and hopefully using some bubbles and some different lighting effects, we can create something that's incredibly dynamic that makes this fantasy image just come to life. All right, so using file and open, I have just opened up this image of Crystal here. Now I didn't record all of the steps in creating this composite, but basically I put her against the AI background and then using some particle generators here in optics, I was able to put these little out of focus orbs in front of her as well. So it gives you that 3D effect. If I zoom into her legs here, you can see that there's some particles that are behind her. There's some particles like the little water particles that I have masked over her legs, but not over the front leg. And then I've also added these little orbs here on the front. This is all just to give the illusion that the particles are sitting in space. If you wanna find any of the particles that I use, you can come down here to particle illusion and you can search for say water and they give you all kinds of different water effects. I believe thin water is the one that I used right here. But we don't wanna create particles that just sit on an image. Of course, you can do that with the software. Instead, we wanna create a looping video to help sell this effect. So I'm gonna come over here to launch particle illusion. This is going to open the particle illusion generator. And now in the generator, you can see I have the thin water here. I'm gonna select that and hit delete because I do not wanna use the thin water. Instead, I wanna find uh, some bubbles. I want bubbles to be coming 
out from her legs and arms, almost as if she just pushed off and you would get, you know, that disturbance in the water. So coming up here to library, I can type in bubbles. And if I come down to water, you can see all of the different bubble effects that I can use here. And now these are showing up in this generator as the motion graphics. So in optics, you're seeing them just as a still frame that you can composite into your work. But now in the particle illusion part of the software, you're seeing them actually loop as they are generated in a video format. Now, the first thing that I need to do is I need to create the length of the cinema graph. If I go too short, I'm not gonna have enough time for the effect to build and look natural. And if I go too long, well, the file size is just gonna be huge. If I come up to view and go to preferences, I can set my duration to 300. That's gonna give me 300 frames or about 10 or 11 seconds of video. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And now right here on this bar, I have 300 frames to preview everything. Now, because I added the area line bubbles, it has attached that effect to my layer one. Now, layer one is my underlying photo here. So I'm gonna click area line bubbles. I'm going to drag this because I want that effect over the entire frame. And now you can see I have these bubbles all over our model. If I come up to this little button here, I can put this on black so that you can see this a little bit more clearly. And now if I hit play, it is showing you all of those bubbles. Now that doesn't look really great because these bubbles are just kind of coming in and out. I want them to actually rise from the bottom. Over here on the left, I see bubble streams area. I think that's what I want. So I'm gonna double click the stream area to add that right below it. I'm gonna click shiny bubbles, delete that. I don't need that one there. And now if I play this back, you can see down here on the right, I can control when this effect starts and stops within the 300 frames. I want it to start at the very beginning, so I'm gonna slide that to the left. And then on the top bar, it's running through my entire sequence. Now what's so amazing about the software is look at all of these parameters. I can change the size. Let's go ahead and bump the size up quite a bit and you can see the bubbles are getting much larger. Now I can also come down to the number and I can decrease the number so that it doesn't look so obnoxious. And then the life, this one controls how long are these bubbles going to stay on the frame. So if I want them to go from the bottom to the top, I might want 100 or 600. If I want them to start and appear and then dissolve before the end of the top of the, my frame, I might go down to, I don't know, like 20. So now if I hit play, you can see they're starting and then stopping. I only have one at a time on the frame, so I might want to increase the number to 30. And there are so many other parameters you can control like weight and velocity. So if you want to really figure out exactly how to make these appear, you can tweak all of those. And then if I come up to shape, I can control the way that these bubbles originate. Right now they're starting on a single plane. I could create a point so that wherever I place this little cursor, that's where the bubbles are gonna appear. I can go to line and I can draw a line. And now my bubbles are going to start right on this V shape. So there's just a lot that you can do. If I really wanna go deep into it, there's also another parameter attached to my bubble streams. I can come down here and I can control all kinds of stuff from the color to the thickness, to the frequency, the random seed. It's pretty powerful stuff. Now in order to speed this up, I'm going to open up my final sequence so that you can see all the effects that I've added because I've added a ton of little effects. And then I've changed the opacity so that it blends in a little bit more natural and it doesn't look like anything is just too bright sitting right on top of the frame. I'm gonna walk you through this so you can see what each one of these effects does. So the effect that I found actually works best for the rising bubbles that appear closer to the camera is this tiny bubbles hole. If I hit play, you can see these large bubbles slowly make their way up the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and add the dim water swirls. And if I turn off my background image, you're gonna be able to see this a lot better. Dim water swirls, it's just adding all of this motion as if you dove into the water, all that residual small bubbles, that turbulent bubbles, that's kind of being placed all over the frame here. Now I've turned that down to like 50%. So you may not be able to see it here on YouTube. If I add smoky water, it's adding this crazy effect down here on the bottom. And with the background image turned off, it almost looks a little too fake or computer generated. But if I come up here and turn on our source frame, I don't know, it's just adding this cool effect on the purple coral and it's giving it a really nice dynamic look that I just liked. 
Going down below, I have deflectors. Now this is a really cool element that you can add to your photos. If you come up here to deflector, it's going to add these red lines. And essentially what these are doing is imagine you had a game of Pong where you're bouncing a ball back and forth. If you could put a wall in front of that ball, it's going to hit the wall and then bounce back. So using these deflectors, you can actually control, as I've done here, some of the effects from spilling onto her face. They're gonna hit this deflector and they're gonna bounce away. Now with these deflectors, you have all kinds of parameters like bounce, hit, and depth. I'm not gonna go into that in detail, but you can find different ways to block the movement and kind of give it more of a 3D effect. So maybe on her body right here, her arm, I've drawn a long deflector going from her shoulder to her hands. And the idea is as bubbles hit this deflector, they might change direction, which would look a little bit more natural if the bubbles were actually hitting her arm. Really cool, powerful stuff that you can do in this software. So I've added three deflectors here. And then now let's talk about the little bubbles. I used tiny bubbles here. And if I turn this on and go ahead and turn off our image, that is all of these effects right here. It's these tiny little bubbles and you can see what that deflector is doing right here. I have the deflector here and it's preventing the bubbles from coming up here on her arm. It's also preventing the bubbles from coming up on her face. This first one is tiny bubbles by her back leg. If I turn this one on, tiny bubbles up by her waist, tiny bubbles up by her mouth. These bubbles are designed to make it look like she's actually breathing. So let me go ahead and hit play here so you can see all of the motion effects that we got going on. This is kind of crazy. And then if I turn on our source frame, now you can see what it's doing. It's, it's really doing a great job of just adding a little bit of motion. And then because I added those tiny bubbles as still frames on the original composite image, the moving bubbles blend in really well with these bubbles right here that do not move. So let me go ahead and hit play so you can see we have little bubbles moving across her body, but then we have that turbulent bubbles that are built into the frame itself. All right, so the final thing that I really wanted to do was I love the little out of focus bokeh orbs that the AI art created. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to find an effect in optics that could allow those orbs to become lively as well? So I found one called bokeh or bokeh dots. And now you can see those out of focus orbs that were created in the artificial intelligence backplate are now starting to come alive using the Boca Dots Vibrate plugin. All right, so this is pretty wild. We have a lot going on. It's exciting to think that you could use all of these effects as a single frame in your own photography, but now using the particle illusion generator, you can create these video loops of those effects and add them to your photography to create these cinemagraphs. Now, the final thing that we need to do is render this out into a video format. So I'm simply gonna hit render. So I'm gonna show you quickly the settings that I use so that I can take this exported file, throw it into Premiere, and then using another little trick, I wanna create a boomerang so that if I play this cinemagraph over, it just loops without any interruptions. You don't see the start and stop. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But I've found if these settings aren't quite right, using some of the color profiles, you're gonna find that your exported file from Boris does not look correct when you throw it into Premiere. So what I've used is ProRes 422. I like to export this as an MPEG-4, and then I'm just using the Open 264 codec, and then I'm going to change this to 23.976 frames per second. Channels are RGB, field order is progressive, and then you can change the width to whatever you like. Now, because this photo is vertical, my width is kind of crazy. It's 1500 wide by 2250 tall, if you were doing a horizontal image like I showed at the beginning of this video, probably just want to make those your standard 4K or 1080 dimensions. So now I'm just going to choose where to export this and hit start render. And now it's exporting this final file that I could use if I just wanted a 10 second little video or like I'm going to show you here in a minute, we'll throw it into Premiere to create a non-stopping loop that looks really, really great. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere and I want to show you how you can create that never ending loop effect. So I've created a sequence here called sequence one, and I've used the same resolution as my final file. It's 1500 wide by 2250 tall. That's because it's a vertical image. And now I'm gonna take my crystal swim video. I'm gonna drag it into my timeline. And you can see this is 12 seconds long, 300 frames. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an endpoint by hitting I, and then I wanna to come to the end and hit an out point by hitting O. And now I can turn on the loop playback. If you don't have this, simply hit the plus button find it here and drag it to your toolbar. 
by turning this on and now hitting play, it is going to loop my cinema graph over and over again. Now, as we get to the end of this, you're gonna see the problem. It's going to have a big jump frame where everything changes. So the way to resolve this is I am going to take any part of this video, turn on my razor, cut the frame. And now basically right here where I've cut, to the left of it, I have the exact same motion as everything to the right of it. So if I pick this part of the frame up, move it up to track two, and bring it towards the end. And so what I've essentially done here is I've created the first frame of my video to be exactly the same as the last frame of my video. The only problem is, is right here where it transitions, you can see it's doing a jump frame. So if I come over to my effects, hit add, and find the additive dissolve, add that to the beginning of my top frame, it's now going to slowly fade in that beginning few seconds and allow it to seamlessly end with the very first frame of our video here. So now if I hit play right here in the middle, as it gets to my additive dissolve, it's adding it without you noticing it, and then it jumps from the last frame to the first frame, which are actually the same thing. And here we go, this is our final cinemagraph, and as we get to the end here, I have this on loop, and so it is going to seamlessly start back at the beginning, and so if you're using a platform that allows the looping function, or a boomerang, or something like that, you can now upload it and use it for yourself. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable. This was kind of a fun shoot to design and a fun way to use cinemagraphs. And again, if you're a stills photographer and you're finding that your images are not getting the same engagement from platforms like Instagram, this is a really interesting way to create images that now become videos and you can share them and hopefully you can get a lot more response from your audience. If you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. We're trying to hit 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. If you guys wanna learn more about photography and learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full link tutorials and of course, if you wanna get your own copy of Optics and use some of these incredible tools in your own still photography or use them to create cinemagraphs, go to the link in the description below or the pinned comment below. You can download a trial version, test it all out, and of course, for being an F-Stoppers viewer, you're also gonna get a sweet little deal if you decide to buy the software. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, but I hope you guys enjoy this, and I will see you very, very soon.